My name is Jesse Mwai and a good morning to every one of you and thank you so much for joining me for this brief time of our devotion. I want to encourage you, I want to challenge you on what I have entitled the power of the mind. The power of the mind. We are all endowed with a mind and normally we move in the direction of our mind. Whatever occupies, consistently occupies our mind is what at the end of the day we end up doing or becoming. Now the Apostle Paul writing to the church in Philippi in uh, Philippians chapter 4 uh, verse 8 he says finally brothers whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy think about such things. Notice, very specific. Whatever is good, whatever is admirable, whatever is right, whatever is pleasant, the Apostle Paul encourages us as God's people that those are some of the things that we need to think about. Those are the things that ought to occupy our mind. We normally move in the direction of our predominant thoughts. As you probably get ready for the day this morning, as you get ready for the week, uh, you know, today, I want to encourage you to mind what goes on in the recesses of your mind. A lot of times, too many people don't pay attention what goes on in their mind. They allow anything to go through their mind, and sometimes their minds are uh, predominated with negativity, negative thoughts, uh, negative thoughts about themselves, about their own ability, negative thoughts about life, negative thoughts about the world, negative thoughts about their work about their loved ones. There's always so much negativity. There's no optimism. Uh, there's just this darkness around them. Everything has to be wrong. There's something wrong here. There's something wrong there. They don't get along with anybody. Uh, they can never speak a kind word. They can never speak a good positive word to anyone. They, they find it difficult to accept anything positive. They find it difficult to see anything good or anything positive out of life out of life circumstances now you, it doesn't matter how much you pray if you're that kind of a person it will not matter how much you go to church if you have developed in yourself that uh, kind of mentality where you allow negativity to keep uh, you know going around your brain and uh, that's all you keep thinking about that's all you keep meditating about, I assure you it will translate eventually in your life, your life's output, the things that you attract, the people that you attract around, the circumstances that you attract around yourself, because we normally go in the direction of our mind. And I believe that's why the Apostle Paul was very, very clear, categorical. He did not mince his words. He says, whatever is good, whatever is pleasant, whatever is noble, he says, that's where your mind ought to be. I confess, it's not always easy to keep our mind fixed on the right things, or fixed on that which is positive. It is a battle, and there's always a battle of the mind that is actually going on. But I also want to tell you this, many of the battles that we fight are either won or lost in the realm of the mind. It, it, it is not in any other realm. Before things manifest themselves in the physical, the battle is actually fought or won in the realm the mind. When I wake up in the morning, the realm of my mind will either settle for that which is positive, for that which is good, you know, God's word, or that which is negative. And I find myself sometimes when I go in the direction of the negative, if I begin my day just uh, having negativity running through my mind, settling in my thought life, it will probably determine the kind of day that I will have, I will find it difficult to see anything good coming out of that day. But if even in the morning, you know, as a psalmist said, early in the morning will I seek thee, and I choose, and I choose to, uh, to, to, to refuse to go in, the, in that negative trail, if I choose early in the morning to begin seeking the face of the Lord, to fill the, my mind with the word of God, to fill my mind with the thoughts of God, to fill my mind with that something good is going to happen today, it will end up attracting that which is good, that which is noble, that which is wonderful. So I want to challenge you. 
I want to challenge you very quickly that this morning, even as you prepare yourself for what is the possibilities that are ahead of you, I acknowledge, yes, sometimes life can be difficult. I acknowledge that sometimes there are trials that we must go through. Sometimes we have to deal with, with hurt and with, with pain. Sometimes you have to deal with hard. I, I, I know those things happen and they happen to every one of us. But I want to challenge you that no matter what you go through, surrender your thought life to the Lord. Immerse your, this is how you do it. You immerse yourself in the word of God. Develop a, a, a habit and a discipline of meditating on the word of God. Meditation basically means you're not just casually reading the word of God, but when you meditate, you put your thoughts into it take some considerable amount of time and even as you get into the world you surrender it all to God and allow God to speak to you even in that moment. That's the first thing that you must do. Seek the word. Seek the Lord in his word so that you can fill your mind with thoughts of heaven, with thoughts uh, of God and what God is saying to you. If you are going to win in this battle of the mind, there are several things that you must do. The first of which that you must be somebody who immerses yourself in the reading of God's Word, in the meditation of God's Word. Now, meditation is just not just a casual reading or just reading just one verse every now and then. Meditation of the Word means that you discipline yourself on a daily basis to get into the Word of God, to hear the mind of God, to know the heart of the Father. Uh, and it, it helps you to be absorbed in thoughts ab uh, about your life and in thoughts about God, thoughts about the kingdom of God. And it begins to discipline your mind. It begins to discipline your mind to focus on the things that are good, things that are upright, things that are noble. It is important for you to fill up your mind with the word of God. A lazy mind or somebody who does not want to get into the word of God will often find themselves filling the very mind with negative thoughts and with negativity. But then the second thing is this, is that if you're going to win the battle of the mind is that you must be careful who is around you. You must be careful who you associate yourself with, who you're in relationship with. There are people, sometimes they could be just one person or a few people around us, a friend somewhere, an associate somewhere, but people who sometimes pull you down, people who sometimes are full of such negativity and sometimes you allow them into your space. Sometimes even one phone call can actually get, get you depressed. One text message can get your mind just going in all different kinds of directions because sometimes we allow people uh, to come into our lives, people who are full of negativity, they, they don't inspire us. In, if anything, they rob us of our joy. You have to choose your associates wisely. Yes, I know that these are people sometimes we have to work with. These are people sometimes we have, to, we have to be in relationship with. But you must be careful. You must choose what you will allow into your space, into your personal space. The conversations that you engage yourself in. Uh, what you allow people to speak into your life. You have to be careful so that you protect your mind. You must protect your mind from negativity. But then the third thing, and also very, very critical and very important, is that we must, we, we're going to win the battle of the mind, we must tune to the frequency of heaven. How do I do that? Apart from the reading of the word, I must also be a man or a woman of prayer, seeking the face of the Lord, talking to the Father, like a little child who takes delight in talking to his or her father, so that the father can be able to speak good things to this child. We too must be people who want to talk to the Father and we take time to talk to our Father in heaven. We are supposed to pray about anything and about everything, making our petitions known. When I am worried, let me make my petition known to the Lord. When I am anxious, how do I find peace? Taking it to the Father. And in that way, it, it helps me because when I am a person who prays and talks to the Father, it delivers my mind from a life of worry, and anxiety and negative thought processes. But then fourthly, there's also something else that you can do. 
apart from the, the, the few things I've just mentioned, the three things that I have just also mentioned, is that, that for me to, to win the battle of the mind, I must be a man who is a visionary. Create visions for my life, dreams for my life. What is it that I want to accomplish? I want to tell you this, beloved, that God has a plan for your life and he has a good plan for you. Not a plan to destroy you, not a plan to, destroy, to pull you down, but a good plan. But it is my responsibility. I know he has a good plan for me, but it is my responsibility to download in my mind the plan that the Father has for me. The giftings that he has put in my heart, the abilities and the skills he has put in my life. It is my, he will not do it for me. Nobody can do it for me. I must be the one to download it. I must be the one to tap into what God is doing in my life. And I begin envisioning what my life could be. Dreaming how my life needs to turn out. Yes, some dreams may seem lofty. They may seem out there. But with God, all things are possible. But beyond just dreaming and envisioning, I must begin to, wor to work towards them. One step at a time. One day at a time. Such that my life counts for something on a daily basis. Friend, remember, the mind is a powerful, powerful part of our life. There is power in your mind. And that power you can either harness it to take you in the direction that God will have you go, to take you in a good place, to take you to a place of abundance, a place of blessing and prosperity, or that same, same mind can also lead you to destruction. And it is a choice that we make not just once. It's a choice that I must make on a daily basis. It's a choice that I must continuously make every day when I wake up in the morning. It is a choice that I must continuously make on a consistent basis where my life is concerned. I want to challenge you. Turn your life around. Just in case your life is going in the wrong direction, remember, you can actually turn your life around. I want to challenge you. You can harness the giftings and the powers and the opportunities in your life just by changing maybe the way you think. So whatever is good, whatever is noble, whatever is, is worth your thought life, think on those things. And may the Lord bless you and may the Lord grant you victory in everything that you do. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen.